Hey, Ed, come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper at Levitate's. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76 hour all Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> Ow. So, are you waiting till Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No, no, oh no. We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, no, no, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. And the year before that we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You, you mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. The dog took that one too. Um, one year we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a mess and a mess. Yeah, just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it, dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Fat. Fine. But when I'm done saying this, you're gonna march in here, and you're gonna watch my star levitate. Fine, 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 do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, <laughs> Merry Christmas. What a night. What a crazy, crazy, crazy night. I tell you this right now, Bethlehem has, has never seen anything like tonight. It has just been so, so incredibly just amazing. My name is Stuart, and this is my inn, and my wife, Estelle. I'm so sorry, my wife, Estelle. Hold on. Estelle! Estelle! I, I'm trying to find some tools. Are you still holding the bed up? Just put the bed down. I'm trying to find some tools. What? Never mind. Hold the bed up. I, I tell you, I have never seen anything like this before in Bethlehem. You see, season has issued this decree that everybody should go back to their hometown and be registered and this is the, this is what's so crazy it has just turned commerce on its ear I mean bo business is booming I mean it is a complete miracle what I've seen here in Bethlehem I mean a complete miracle it would take a total bigger miracle to, com to compete what I've seen today I'm telling you this right now my wife hold on Estelle will you put the bed down please just put the bed down I'm trying to find some tools what no, I didn't call you a fool. I said, put the bed down. Never mind, hold the bed up. <sighs> so many things have been going on. So many. Let me just say this. My in here, I own it. My wife, Estelle, she would tell you that I only work here part-time, half-heartedly at that. But it is my inn. I was going to call it the Holiday Inn, but um, nobody really takes a holiday in Bethlehem. We are the uh, sixth motel down the street. I was going to call it Motel 6, but it was so on the nose, even if I left the light on. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so many things running a business. Hold uh, Estelle, will you put the bed down? What? I did not say lose a few pounds. I said put the bed. Never mind. Hold the bed up. So many people tonight. There was this one couple. There was this one couple that came through it, and my, my inn was packed by this point. And this couple came up, and it was pretty late in the night, and the man said, do you have a place for us to stay? And I told them like I told everybody else, I'm sorry, no vacancies, we are all full. My wife Estelle was right beside me and she did something. She jabbed me in the gut and I knew this, that meant two things. I find them a place to sleep or I find myself a place to sleep. So I chose A and I told them the only thing that I could think of is that they could sleep in the barn. Now, my, my mother, God rest her soul, she would roll over in a grave if she knew that I was doing that. But I, I told them that they could stay in the barn, but it's no place for humans. There's manure and hay, and it's just no place for humans. And, and the man, he looked at me, and he said, thank you. And then he said, God bless you. God bless you. It was such a, a weird phrase because God has been silent for over 400 years, and here he is saying, God bless you. 
And then he looked at his wife and he touched her stomach because that's what my wife saw, that this woman was pregnant. And he said, because God's about to bless us. It was just, uh, there was something so different about this couple. They were just set apart. They were, the only word that's been coming to my mind all night is this word, holy. I, I know it's not a word that we use, especially when it comes to relationships, but there was just something different about them that was just holy. Anyway, enough about that. I have to get back here. But by the way, let me just say this to all of you. Mary census, all right? This is the biggest thing that's ever hit. So I've coined the phrase. It's my intellectual property. I will probably get rich on this. But Mary census, everybody. Stuart, I finished the bed. No thanks to you. You're welcome. Well, I, uh, Estelle, I'm sorry. I was just about to get there. I was just talking and trying to relay. What, 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 what are you doing? That star. Yes, it's a star. What about it? <gasps> I have never seen anything like it. It's so huge and so bright and shiny. It's just, a star is a star is a star, Estelle. Come on, let, let, let's go inside, all right? You're not going to budge, are you? All right, well, here, please, please, just here, ha have, have some coffee to keep you warm, Oh, all right? no, 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 coffee will keep me up. No, no, this is decaf. Drink up. Mmm. Oh. This tastes like regular. Are you sure it's decaf? Oh, yes. That's the secret of Pharaoh's new naturally brewed decaffeinated coffee. Mm. It tastes like regular, but it's decaffeinated. Mm, good cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. That star. I'm, I'm just so mesmerized by mm -hmm. it. Ooh, do you think it's maybe guiding some weary traveler tonight? Can you even imagine being out in the middle of nowhere and the only thing to guide you is a star? I think it would take a very wise man to answer that question, Estelle. <laughs> Hey, while you're not busy, rub my shoulders. Why should I rub your shoulders? Because I've only been holding up a bed for 10 minutes. All right, rub I'll, my all shoulders. All right, all right. Here, here, I'll rub your shoulders. Let me, um, let me give you something to eat while I'm rubbing your shoulders. Here you oh, go. Oh, yes, thanks. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was a good bagel. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get it? I got a whole slew of them down at Old Man Moses' Deli down the streets. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Is that butter on it? Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's a butter substitute. It has half the fat of calories of regular butter or margarine. Oh, it tastes like butter. It's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Estelle, I cannot even believe why we are still up. I guess that's just being a part of business owners. But yeah. we are up, mm -hmm. and those shepherds are up. Why do they keep going into our barn, and why do they keep making so much noise? Well, maybe they know the couple inside. Oh, yes. What are their names? Mary and... Joe, I think. Joe, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, get one good look and let's go in, all right? Oh, the star. Oh, do you think maybe there's some purpose behind it? What? Yeah, maybe it's a God thing. The star is a God? No, Estelle, you're getting loopy on me here. No, it's just a star, okay? No, no, it's no. A it could happen. Estelle, no, it's not a God thing. Oh, look. come on. Enough. My husband, Stuart... He's a good man, but, but sometimes I feel like he's too busy and he misses out on the blessings of life. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. He's, he's a, a good and kind and gentle man. Other times, he's a perfect example of why mothers eat the young. <laughs> it's just that I have such joy in my heart for God, and, and I'd really love to share that joy with him. If only he'd let me. My wife, Estelle, she's an amazing woman. There's no doubt about that. But sometimes I feel like she gets kind of carried away. She calls everything God things. I mean, God has been quiet for a really long time, but she insists on calling everything in our world, in her world, in the world God things. Like that star. She wants to correlate that star somehow with, with, with God. I mean, it's just, it just sounds so foolish. And yet, I look at her faith and... I, I want some of that. I, I want to know that, but I feel like I would be unknowledgeable or I would look weird stepping out. I guess that's what it is. It's just, it's just fear. Huh. I just wish I had a miracle. Like, like God. Like if God revealed himself in the flesh, now that would be a miracle, right? My wife, Estelle, she sees miracles all day long, and I keep looking for one. 
I guess, guess I, I desire intimacy. intimacy. What did you what say? What did you say? No, you no, said no, something. No, you said something. I heard no, you I, say I heard something you say something very clearly. Something about no. Macy's, wasn't it? Oh, well, Macy's is having that winter sale. All right, so. never mind. We're not going to get. All right, you know what? Do this for me, okay? Just, just go in there and tell those shepherds that are going into our barn to get out. All right? They're making too much noise, and they can't be doing that. They can't be going in there while there's a couple in there trying to sleep. Okay? They have to pay rent like everybody else. Oh, all right. I'm okay. Just I don't get in such a huff. I'll be right back. You know, she's right. That star, it is bright. It's brighter than any star I've ever seen. What if, what if it is a, a God thing? No, Stuart, just get a hold of yourself because no, we're not, we're not going to do that, but but what if I took a step of faith and I just said yes, okay? What if I just went with it because that abnormal looking star, what if I just said, okay, God, maybe you have a purpose for that star. Here I go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell her. Okay, Estelle, Estelle. Yes, yes. It's happening. It's happening right now. It is happening. Yes, no, Mary, Mary. What? She's having the baby. Oh, I got to go. And the girl had a baby. And those shepherds that were clamoring around and going into the barn, they said they were sent there by angels, a heavenly host. And one of the shepherds said, let me see if I can get this straight because it's been such a long night. But um, one of the shepherds said, the angel said that, do not fear, fear not. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. That born unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior, Christ the Lord. And, and, that the, and that there will be a sign given unto you that there will be a baby lying in a manger in swaddling clothes. My, my manger. God, if this is for real, if this is all you, I, I would just like to know. I, okay, I'll do it. I'm for it. I, I just need to know more. I mean... If you could just unravel these mysteries, give, give me some wise man to help me out. A wise man at this hour. Well, where are you going to find a wise man at this hour? I mean, that's just incredulous. Oh, well, there's a wise man in the barn. There's what? Yeah, there's a wise man in the barn, and he says he deals in impossibilities. Impossibilities? That's his job. And he brought a case with him. He brought a case? Yeah. What, what was in the case? A barrage. A barrage of what? Bulk. What kind of bulk? Expensive bulk. For who? For the baby in the barn. The baby in the barn? How did he know about the baby in the barn? Well, he said he followed the star. He followed the star to the baby. He followed the star to the baby in the barn. He followed the star to the baby in the barn in Bethlehem. Basically. Huh. <laughs> the star, the baby impossible. That's his job. <sighs> all right, all right, Estelle, I'm just trying to wrap my head around all of this. How did, how did all of this, how did all of this happen? <sighs> she said yes. <laughs> she said yes, and the impossible became possible. Stuart, huh. the son of God has been born in our barn. The Son of God is in our bo the the angels, the wise man, the star, the shepherds, the baby, the Son of God. Impossible. That's his job. And to think, I left the Messiah out in the cold last night. I'd hate to be you. <laughs> Look, I've got to go. I've got to get back in that barn. Oh, oh hey, before uh -huh. I forget, yes. the wise men said that if you see a drummer boy to go ahead and send him to the barn. Whoa, 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 a drummer boy. A little drummer boy. A little drummer boy. Yeah. What, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to play, bang on his drums. He's going to bang on his drums. He's going to bang on his drums for the baby in the barn. He's going to bang on his drum for the baby in the barn in Bethlehem. Basically. Beautiful. What ballad? Parumpa pum pum. Parumpa pum pum. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell him to play his drums for him. Oh, he'll play his best for him. Parumpa pum pum. Parumpa pum pum. -pum. -pum. Catchy. I like it. Wow. <sighs> what a night. What a night. <sighs> how, how, how is the couple? Mary, oh, she's fine. Mm -hmm. and, and Joe, mm. he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, of course. What did they name the baby? Jesus. Ah. They named him Jesus. What a very good name, yeah. Jesus. Well, what are you doing? Ah. Stel, look at that star and tell me what do you see. 
Do you ever notice that you always answer my questions with a question? I do. You know, Stell, I have been thinking, um, I think the world is starving for peace and for love and for hope. What about you? Well, I ate already. <gasps> See, you did it again. What did I do? Answered my question with a question. I did? Where was I? Everyone was starving. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if you know this about me, but since this star and this whole thing happening this night, I'm starting to take this whole pain and suffering thing very, very, very seriously. I bet you are. And that's why I was standing here thinking. Imagine standing, thinking. And then it finally just hit me. I hope it didn't give you a bruise. Who is the one beacon of hope and of love and of peace and of joy? Steven Spielberg? No, 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 Estelle. I'm, just, I'm trying to tell you, I bought into this. I think God is trying to tell us this. After so many years of silence, I think he's talking. I think he's saying something. I just want to know what my, my purpose is, what, what, I, what role I can play in all of this. Stuart. Yes. God is working through you. He is working through you. And if he can work through you, hmm. he can work through anybody. I'll take that as a compliment, kind of. Remember what I've been saying, Stuart. It's, I know. It's a God thing. It's a God thing, thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this night. It's just so, <laughs> so... Holy. Yes. Holy. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've got to go. Yeah. I've got so many mouths to feed. Mm. Oh, Stuart. Yes. I have never felt closer to you than I do right now. Don't ruin it. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to tell you, Mary Census. Mary what? Mary Census. Caesar, the decree, the whole world. This will be so big. A ripple effect is bound to happen. Mary Census. Mary Census. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Stuart, haven't you been paying attention? The biggest thing to ever happen in Bethlehem has happened in our barn. No, it shouldn't be Mary Census. It should be Mary... Mary had the Christ child in a barn after following the star all day. Day. I'll work on it. Yeah, work on that. I love you. I love you. Don't ruin it. All right. Well, Bethlehem will be waking up and they'll be wanting food in their stomachs and they'll be registering and they'll be in their own little world. And what they won't realize is that a savior has entered the world. <laughs> what a silent night. What a holy night. <laughs> yes, rest while you can, child, because your work is about to begin. So to all of you, um, I must get back to work. So let me just say this to you. Mary sense. No, Stuart, don't miss this. Don't miss this in your own home. Don't make it about money and things. It's about the Christ child. <laughs> yes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow. Thank you, Eddie and Carrie. Uh, let's talk about that for a moment. I would just want to share with you, challenge you for just about 10 minutes. Uh, as we lean into now the next 16 days, gang, until Christmas Eve. Now, we know that life continues long after Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But this is a time for us to really focus in. And so throughout the month, we've been saying, let's, let's just bring joy to the world. Why don't we do that? Isaac Watts wrote the great carol that we've already sung today. We're going to close out by singing that even now. And you'll probably sing it again. You'll probably hear it again sometime along the way. 300 years ago this month, he wrote that song. We're still singing it. We found within it, kind of embedded in it, is this pathway to joy. And last week, we said, hey, let, let heaven and earth receive her king. When you receive the king, you experience hope. We talked about last week. This week, our focus has been peace. The idea is that when we prepare him room, when we make room for him, we experience peace. When we don't ex uh, receive him or, or prepare him room, we don't receive peace. We've talked about the fact that often anxiety really is just mean it's being distracted. That's what Jesus taught us. That not being able to focus on one central thing 
is what causes us to have anxiety. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything ramps up at Christmas time so that, that all that challenges us throughout the year is more acute. And so when we're trying to focus on Jesus, who brings peace, interestingly, isn't it? That at a time where you would think we'd focus more on him, yes, the songs are there and all of that, but it's possible to lose him in the midst of it all. And so what we want to do today is just, just challenge you with this. Make room for Jesus. Make room for Jesus. You're going to have to be diligent because everything in this cultural moment says, no, go there, go here, go there, do this, buy this, get this. And everything that's coming at you says, no, don't focus on Jesus. Focus on this. Focus on this. And if you're not careful, you're going to miss him altogether. So let's turn to Luke. You know the story of the, of the Christmas stories there in Luke chapter 2. And uh, what a great kind of mishmash of all things Christmas they put into um, the sketch this morning. Some of you may know, surprisingly, don't want to completely diss on Eddie and Carrie, but the innkeeper's not even mentioned in the Bible. Do you know this? Not even there. Um, and yes, probably an inn, but think more Airbnb is what it is. For real. Long before we had Airbnbs, it's probably someone's home where they're actually staying upstairs, but often the animals and, and such were kept downstairs or down below. And uh, we also know the wise men came sometime after, but I love how they brought this confluence of all things Christmas, even our day, then, back then, first century, into, uh, into our, you know, our thoughts and our minds today. And what I want to do in a brief time is to challenge you to make room for Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, uh, I want to just read 1 through 7. These are words that you've heard before every year. And I challenge you to pause and read this uh, together. Maybe on Christmas Eve it would be a good time to do that. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered or taxed. This was the first registration while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Now, what this does, these first few verses here in Luke 2, places this in historical context. I mean, this is not a fairy tale. This is real. We know when this was. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with, his, with, with Mary, his betrothed. Now, pause for a moment there. That, those couple of verses, three and four, now tell us, wait, wait, wait. So he is of the line of David. He's of this Davidic line, which was foretold long ago. We might say, well, how did they end up in Bethlehem? Why did they go to Bethlehem uh, to be taxed? No, no, no. Micah 5, 2. Ha. Prophesized that the Savior will be born in Bethlehem because he's of the lineage of David. So how about that? The sovereign hand of God says, okay, Mary and Joseph, sorry, but you're going to have to travel to Bethlehem right as she's pregnant. Why? You know, why? She's, she's, she's about to give birth. She goes there to Bethlehem at this time, in that moment, so that the baby is born in Bethlehem. This is God's sovereign hand over this entire story to remind us that he's sovereign over our lives as well. He's sovereign over your life. And then it says uh, to Mary, his betrothed. Okay, so think uh, fiance who was with child. She's pregnant and about to give birth. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her first son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths. We don't say swaddling much. Swaddle, a verb, means to wrap. So if you've seen, for real, not a gummy bear, not, a, not ice or some, you know, something else, but a baby in the manger in the nativity scene, he's wrapped up real tight. That's exactly what happened. Wrapping up a baby, swaddle him in these cloths. He's, he's in these swaddling cloths, clothes, and laid him in a manger because there's no place for them in the inn. That's the only place we see anything about no place. Now, clearly someone, was it an innkeeper? Was it someone said, we don't have room for you? There's no room here. And so they had to go elsewhere. How about that? Jesus, the Son of God comes, and we have no room for him. And it's possible, even in our day, if you're like me, you may struggle at times to make room for Jesus. And again, I'm, I'm challenging us over the next couple of weeks in particular, 
make room for him, I want you to see three things today. Make room for Jesus. The first one, make room for unscheduled, for the unscheduled. All right? It's going to happen. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen tomorrow. Watch for things that are unscheduled. Mary and Joseph, this was not something they scheduled. For Mary to become pregnant in a close, tight-knit Jewish community, unmarried teenager, probably not good news. In fact, God had to reveal to her through angelic messengers, right? Even the same through a dream for Joseph, because he's not, this is not going to go well. Coming to your fiance and saying, by the way, I'm pregnant, you're not the man, right? That's not going to go well. This is unscheduled all the way around. And it appears, right, that the whole world didn't see this coming. And yet God invites Joseph and Mary, this little Bedouin couple, to become a part of this grand divine conspiracy that nobody saw coming. Now we look back, of course, and we see the prophetic word that came over and over and over, and it was unscheduled. But as we heard, Mary said yes. So here's what I want to challenge you with. You've got lots scheduled this month. I've got lots. Stacy and I have lots of events we're going to. And I love Christmas. I love it all. But you know, the most important moments are often those that are unscheduled. I know for me, this past week, it happens all the time. I've learned this in ministry over the years. The most powerful moments that I'll have on my way home after a long day will most often be those that run schedule. Those where God just brings somebody into my life, someone he wants me to see. Wasn't on my schedule, but it was on his. And this is what we learn from the Christmas story. God will interrupt you. Because here's the thing. We've got our own schedules, don't we? Many of you are here today and you're thinking, uh, I thought that you know, my schedule was this. Some of us are here and we're thinking, man, I thought I would have graduated from school by now. Or I thought I would have the dream job by now. I thought that perhaps my, my spouse and I would be further along by now. Some of you are here today and you're thinking, I thought I'd have kids by now. Some of you are thinking, I thought I might, I'd be married by now. And some of us, if you're like me, the older I get, I mean, there are times when I'm like, man, I thought I'd have it all together by now. And I don't. Because I have my schedule. God has his schedule. But here's the thing, when those two things conflict, when they challenge each other, we're often quick to run from him. We don't want to be interrupted, but I want to remind you today, Proverbs 16, 9 says this, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. You can make all your plans. God is the one in control and he does it one day at a time, not just one lifetime at a time. He does it one day at a time and it's going to happen this week. Watch for it. I want you to keep this in your mind. Something unscheduled will happen. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask the question. Okay, didn't see this coming. Um, God, what might you be up to right here in this moment? Thank you for bringing this unscheduled event, unscheduled person, unscheduled thing into my life. What are you doing? And most often it's to get us out of our comfort zone because he wants to teach us something. Some of you are getting out of your comfort zone these days. And, 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 and that's where he does his best work. Why? Because we want to stay there. That's why we call it a comfort zone. We want to stay in this place. I don't want to, I don't want to venture out. And God is saying, yes, I'm calling you out. The gospel is always centrifugal in its force. It always sends us out. And so whether it was scheduled or not scheduled, I want to challenge you again. Next Saturday from 1.30 to 5, maybe unscheduled for you. I want to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and go about two miles away. Hour and a half. I mean, mile and a half, not hour and a half, if you walk, maybe. Mile and a half. It's no time. Five minute drive to a place where all the nations, people from around the world will be there. We're going to have an opportunity to hear music from all around the world. And we're just going to be a faithful presence. The incarnational, in the flesh presence to say, you matter to us. We love you. And we're going to be there. Jack Lowe, I hope you'll come. I don't know what you're doing this Christmas, going to a lot of parties, shopping, whatever else you're doing. This will be perhaps the most meaningful, memorable thing of the Christmas season for you. So come and join us out there. Okay, so watch for, make room for unscheduled events. Second, make room for the unwanted, all right? The unwanted, unwanted interruptions. Make room for unwanted people. Let's be honest. Come on, real talk. Some of y'all are going to be with some people 
over Christmas that you're like, okay, once a year is like too much, okay? Um, you're going to be with relatives, perhaps, um, you know, the crazy aunt who shows up, who's got different views than you have. You're going to find yourself, maybe it's at a, I've already talked to some, went to a work party, beat me down, but, you know, had to go to that, especially if it's your spouse, right? You got to go with them. You work with some crazy people, you know, and, and you're going to run into some people that are maybe unwanted people. Or how about this? You're going to come across people who are going to cross your path with, while, while you're out and about, and you're going to have some unwanted uh, interruptions of people in your life. Think about Mary again. I love it from the sketch this morning, but can you imagine? I know when Stacy and I had, had our babies, we had twins first, right? And I mean, I'm sorry, but the last thing a, a new mom wants are a bunch of people hanging out, right? I mean, don't you put like no interruptions, please? I mean, no visitors? Because you, if nothing else, you just want to hold your little baby. And, and, and for us, it's like, no, we're holding our babies, you know. It's man on man. That's man to man. We're already in trouble. And, and, and everybody is, but, but what you want, let's just be a family. Can we just please, can y'all leave the room, right? And then Mary has the baby, and then a bunch of hobos show up. I mean, I mean, right? They're like the lowest caste in the whole system. And if the funk of the stable is not enough, they got a bunch of dudes showing up. And yet, here's the point, unwanted people, yet God ordained for them to come and to share what they experienced and to confirm all that was happening. Unwanted people in our lives are there to bless us and we're to bless them. Friends, watch for it. Have your spiritual antennae up. There'll be some unwanted people coming into your life this week. Just say, Lord, bring it on. Bring them. Because you are sovereign. You're bringing these people into my life. And then last, just... Make room for the unexpected. That's really what today's all about. Make room for the unexpected. Now, you've got to be walking with Jesus. You've got to be walking in the Spirit if you're going to have this kind of attitude. Lord, I know some things are going to come my way that I'm not going to expect. And I want to challenge you, friends. This is the time, this week and next, when you're in conversations. I've been in several um, where you can have conversations with people and say, Hey, I'm curious. I'm curious. Um, Are you going to church on Christmas Eve? Because I want to invite you to my church. All right? And so let's watch for these opportunities. And then I want to close with this. Just three things real quick. When I was in high school, um, every time we went out playing sports, basketball, football, we had this cheer. I went to East Mecklenburg High School, Mecklenburg County in in Charlotte. East Mech. And we had this this cheer. And it went, stop, look, and listen. Here come the mighty eagles. Stop, look, and listen. Here come the mighty. And and this is when we're like, you know, every player's like getting hyped and everybody's going crazy. And and, uh, stop, look, and listen. And I want to just challenge you with this. Close with this. this. These next couple of weeks. In fact, throughout your life, you need to stop, you need to look, you need to listen. Just remember that. Stop, okay? Remember in Psalm 48, uh, 46, 10? Be still and know that I'm God. Literally, let your hands hang down. Stop. Here's an axiom I've, I've seen true in my life. When I stop, God speaks. When I don't, he doesn't. I mean, he'll, speak, he'll get my attention, but in ways I don't want him to. I want you to stop. But I want you to look and really focus, okay? Really focus. Get off your screens. You know, have conversations with people and look people in the eyes. Look at people who are right there in front of you. I'm learning to live as a faithful presence, whomever God puts in front of me, to be faithful in the moment. I want you to see a picture. Um, I love this picture uh, on the screen. You got that picture? We got that picture. Look at this. Look at that picture. Yeah, what's happening? There's only one person truly taking it in. And she is loving it. I don't know what they're looking at, but everybody else is like, I got to get there. I got to capture this. I got to post this. I'm guessing it's somebody famous. Friends, listen. The famous one has showed up. He's come. And, and he just wants us to behold him, to see him, make room for Jesus, and then listen to him as he speaks. Listen to him. John 6, 63 says this. It is the spirit who gives life and flesh is no help at all. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. I want you to focus in on people. I want you to focus in on him and stop, look, and listen. All right? 
So now I'm going to pray over us, and we're going to close with a song. And don't, don't rush out. Kids, we got, we got a special surprise for you. So hang. Let's pray together. All right? We're going to sing Joy to the World on our way out today. I just want to challenge you, friend. Not just stop, look, and listen, but pause right now. Have you received Christ as your Savior? This baby grew up, and he lived the perfect life for you. He died on the cross for you. He faced the unscheduled, the unwanted to bring about the unexpected. Because in him is an unexpected joy, unexpected life. In him is all that you've been looking for. So Lord, we give you our hearts, we give you our lives, and we Pray that you will bring joy into our hearts, not circumstances that make us happier, but joy in our circumstance. And that we'll live it out this week and the weeks to come. We'll be light and salt. We'll be joy for others who need it desperately this season. We love you. We worship you. In your name we pray.